Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Bean Town Banter and Bullshit. We've got a couple good ones for you tonight. Uh, back in 2002, the Jesse Burkett Little League team from Worcester uh, made it all the way to the World Series. And we're going to take a ride back with them in time. Uh, hear some of their stories, you know, quick uh, things they couldn't tell other people or whatever, because we have an open forum here. We really don't care. So, uh, also tonight, we're going to weigh in. We're going to have Peter McNeely weigh in. Um, that's it's going to be a good time. So, let's, uh, we're going to get moving here. Tom, you ready for tonight? I am. Yeah, we've been, we've been psyched about this one. All right. But well, all right, remember, I'm Tom and Daly is Tom. So we got to discriminate. We got Papa Dale's and we got Lincoln. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I mean, I'm Tom Fleming. I have no, I have no qualms yeah. about hiding my name. No qualms. <laughs> we, got, uh, we should have Teddy and them on fairly soon. I know um, this should be interesting to have Peter. Like I said, uh, I don't know what time. We should call him about 7.30 or, you know, maybe quarter of eight or so, but. I think it'll be a good time. Uh, I think so too. I'm looking forward to it. I'm Teddy's coming on right now. Teddy Daly, right. I believe. What do you play? Second base for that team, or was he at? Was he at? Third? Uh, was he a shortstop? I don't know. No, the shortstop was the other guy. Uh, he may have played second or right. If he was right. anything like me, he played right or second. Yeah. <laughs> like literally, being right. the small, fast kid. Yeah, that, that was that was my only role. Right. <laughs> like, Yep. Oh, there's Teddy right there. All right. We're going to bring him in. Uh, one other good. Let's see. Got our daily. We're going to get him in there. Um, All right. Hold on. There we go. What? Oh. Hello, Teddy Daly. Are you there? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Teddy. Yes, I can. Um, this is Beautiful. Tom Fleming. We, we've met a few times. I'm friends with your dad. Oh, yeah. I'm really happy to see you. But I met you, you when you were young. So it's so interesting to hear from you now. Literally, it's 14 years since I moved from Worcester. Yeah. You were so young and so fresh off the World Series experience. It was, yeah. It was always cool to talk to you. So I, I look forward to this conversation, but I don't want to kill it. We're going to let the other guys get in. But man, uh, nice to talk to you. And thank you. Thank you very you much. You too. Tommy, my dad is actually with me, so he's here too. Oh, okay. All right. So he's right there. All right. Yep. Hey, Tommy. How you doing, man? Hi, Tom. Hi. Good. Doing great. Excellent. All right. Um, uh, I guess, are we going to start this thing? Are we going to start? Go right this ahead. Thing there, Mike? You got it. I'm trying to, Teddy, can you uh, request to get on screen? I did. It said the host had to turn it on. Hold on. I can't start my video. The host has stopped it. Let me, uh, let me fix that. Sure. Screen, let me stop video. All right. So we got you. Uh... There we go. There he is. There they hey, are. Hey, All hey. right. Nice to see you, buddy. Yeah. Uh, it, it has been years. It has definitely been years. But good to see you. And you too. Looking good, Tommy. Like yeah, the, look, at, look at the dailies. Oh, oh look at rocking it. Oh, <laughs> hardcore. With your beards. Everyone's got a beard but me. What the fuck? <laughs> gone, yeah. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? <laughs> yep, yep. All right, um, I see another guy named Eric off on the right side is he yep. one of your teammates right that's uh that show no that's uh that was eric king he's just uh he's a local guy he played softball around there i believe oh, oh i know king yeah oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I, he, he got me into my first tournament team when i was 19. he's a beast that's all he does i i worked with him uh security down at the dispensary at, uh, the oh end, yeah no, he uh yeah he he said something about himself retiring like three years ago. And then I yeah. saw a picture of him on a softball field this year. I was like, ah, I'm pretty sure you uh, did not retire, sir. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's, uh, he'll never quit. As long as he can walk, he'll still play. That's how it goes. Mm -hmm. But uh, did, you, did you guys talk to any of the other guys? Uh, yeah, I had a Facebook message going. I just sent them the link. Yeah. So oh, yeah. if right. they hop on, they hop on, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
Let me get that out there too. So, uh, uh, kick it off, Tommy. Uh, uh, well, I don't know. I don't want to step on people, but Tommy, I would like to. What I'm really curious about is your Worcester experience before you got to the World Series. Like, you literally had to play all those all star teams, all the other leagues, and you had to pick those all star teams. Am I correct or am I not? And was that like a brutal process just to get out of like the New England? I'm not hearing Tommy. Am I, is my mic fucked? No, I, I can't hear him either. Yeah, I can hear you, Teddy. I can't hear Tommy. Interesting. Hold on. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you perfect. Yeah, I can hear you totally. This is weird. All right. Uh, hold on. I'm trying to figure something out here. Yep. Yep. Hey, we're beta. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we're beta. We're <laughs> fucking alpha, but we're still fucking beta. It's a beta <laughs> podcast run by alpha males. So alpha males. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, I can't even take credit for that. Oh, it says the mic's on. Well, I don't know why I can't hear Tommy. He's yeah, right next so to weird. Me. Now try it again. How about this? Yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah, I can hear All you right, now. Good. I can hear yeah. you now. All yeah. right. So, so to answer your question, Tom, we didn't yeah, realize. Like starting, like literally starting at like yeah. the season at Jesse Burkett. Well, you know I, what I, mean? could, yeah. I could give you a history that actually goes back to 1997. So yeah. 19, 1997, uh, I coached a team with Steve Abraham and, and Kim Kaplan. First, First time ever coaching the Briquette All Stars, and we we made it to the state finals. And honest to God, uh, no, no disrespect to the team we're honoring today, I think that was a much better team. Uh, but there's so much luck. There's so much luck involved, right? <laughs> Sorry, Teddy. There's, you suck. <laughs> there's so much luck involved, and uh, yeah. we lost in the state finals to a team from Lynn. And honestly, if we played them ten, ten times, would have beat them nine out of ten, and we just. Yeah. Just had a bad the game that day. Baseball, baby. The right. Nature and of so, baseball. So then in um, that was '97. In '98, we won the districts again, and had a pretty good run. '99, uh, we didn't. But then from 2000, 2001, and 2002, we kept getting so close to the state championship, and then we kept getting knocked off by uh, Pittsfield South, and uh, we we dominated the districts um those years and it was always us and schwartz and we had yeah, this Joe schwartz, that's oh right. my god it, it, and i i don't want to over be over dramatic but the briquette schwartz rivalry was like the yankees red sox rivalry i, I know so, it sounds over dramatic but no, if you lived it, it, does, it if you lived it I you know you respected them and you hated them you know yeah. Yeah. um uh there was a kid who came over to, to play for me from schwartz after he moved he wore a schwartz shirt at a practice, I made him take it off. Um, so we had this, <laughs> yeah, we had this problem. Yeah. So it was either us or Schwartz. But uh, the reason I point that out is uh, you're talking about what a grind it was in 02. Yeah. When we got to um, Williamsport, we played some teams. Uh, the Schwartz, the Schwartz team gave us as tough a, a battle as some of the best teams in the country. So that's how good the baseball was that year in, in, in the city. You know. Yeah. Um, Really? But it was, it was a grind. Another kind of note on that was we get to, well, first of all, we all, all we wanted to do was give Doug Hanlon a state championship because we came so close twice. Uh, and, please, and we kept, please tell me who he is. I don't know. Oh, Doug Hanlon, he was the longtime administrator, uh, district administrator for little league baseball in district four central mass. And okay. he was a guy who made the pilgrimage out to Williamsport every year and he would always come back and say oh one day i'd love to see my uh my team's banner hanging up here and no you never think you're going to Williamsport, right but he would say that every year and then we made it and, and honest to god when we did i know i'm uh going all over the place here but when we did no, win the states I hear about him I, I think when, well, well, okay so when we won the states we kind of won it for doug and when we went out to uh get the trophy we made him go out and get it and the man literally was crying, tears down. And that was it. And you know what? We thought we we're going to go down to Bristol and get our asses kicked. We really did. Sort of. 
Uh, hey, we, we, we didn't know what to expect, right? And um, we just we just really uh, wanted to win that state championship and anything else was going to be icing on the cake. And we won that first game in Bristol, one nothing. We said, hey, we can hang down here. And then once we were down there, we realized who the elite teams were. And it was us in uh, Portsmouth, Rhode Island. And their stud um, Ryan was uh, uh, a number one pick of the Red Sox, Ryan Westmoreland. Oh, and I think oh, every, oh every, my goodness. Yeah, yeah we had to play in the league, right? Yeah, and, and we had to beat them. And I don't know if Gordy's joined us yet, but we won, a, won nothing on Gordy's um, home run. Yeah, yeah, I just can't turn on my video. Yeah, let I mean, me uh, let me get you in there. I got you. We got to get the password. You know? <laughs> yeah. uh, hold on, yeah. All right, stop video. All right, you should be able to now. All right. He's yep. in. There he hey. is. Hey, Gordo. Welcome, hey, Gordy hey. Lockbaum. <laughs> So sorry, I'm late. Oh, oh, that's all good. There's no such thing. There's no rules here. We don't. <laughs> Welcome yeah, back so, to join us tonight. Yeah, so we beat fun. Portsmouth, Rhode Island, one to nothing on Gordy's home run, actually, and 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 it was like, holy shit, we're going to Williamsport, you know. And then same thing, we're probably gonna go beat these teams from Texas, whatever, and get our asses kicked, and hopefully we just don't embarrass ourselves, and we go uh, get out to Williamsport, and we lose on a walk-off in extra innings, three to two. And again, at the end of the day, my job. Yeah. <laughs> and um, it, well, I want to like... hear the rest of that story, but go on. <laughs> but um, we, we went, we, we were in that one, three to two. Then we went two to one. And then, so, you know how you say there's a lot of luck involved? We're in pool yeah. play. I mean, and we had to beat Texas by so many runs. They're already in, so they had two phenomenal. They had the best pitcher in the tournament. As much, as, as yeah, much as, I did good. see that when I did my brief yeah. research. Yeah, yeah they yeah. had a guy who was fucking monster. Kid, kid's name Mike. was Kid's name was Walker Kelly. Yeah, and yeah. he was better than the two kids from Louisville, Osborne and Alvy. Alvy, yeah, guys. Oh, that's he good. had the record. He's yeah. got the record still, right? Well, so he would have he would have pitched against us in that game, but they were already in. So they threw a number three against us and Frankie threw against them and, and, and we crushed them. So we got to play the Harlem game. And then that, that was the one that was historic, if you would say, with the walking yeah. home run that everybody was sitting there watching, watching us. And you guys and, were close uh, with Harlem then. Didn't you live with, or you guys were in the same yeah, quarters there, with Harlem? There, there are some funny stories uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. down there too, down in uh, Bristol. Uh, yeah, we, yeah. Uh, cause our regional tournament was in Bristol. And so is the Mid Atlantic region. So we we saw them quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, yeah. Well, they were a fun team. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, it. I I feel like we're neglecting uh, young Gordy Lockbaum here. So please, <laughs> <laughs> again, let me introduce myself. Hey, he's already going to uh, shout out for the game winning home uh, run. Uh, yeah, come on. <laughs> so <laughs> we that. We're only your recollection. <laughs> what is your recollection? Mr. Lockbaum of like your time in Worcester, like getting drafted to the all-star team and going through that. Was, did you know you were a superior baseball player or was it like a, Oh boy, I'm kind of scared. That's um, yeah, I'm not sure, but I know Mr. Daly probably remembers a, a lot better than I do, but um, I, I think there might've been a little bit of a um, jockeying uh, when I was 11 to make the all-star team. And I didn't make it that year, but uh, Frankie Flynn did. And a couple of like the oh, really Frankie a couple of the really stellar athletes would, would make it as an 11 year old. Um, and I didn't make it that year. So I only made it my 12 year old year. So I, I knew I was, you know, doing pretty good, but, uh, but I, I it, so yeah, it was a little bit of a given that I would make the, the, the 12 year old season, but um, I, I don't know. I, I didn't necessarily know before you, you, once you put us all on the same diamond, you know, I didn't know I was any better than anybody else, you know? So I was lucky enough to play shortstop and, you know, bat, first or second for most of that all-star run so that that, that, that I, I leave it up to the coaches to make that call All yeah right. but, but you felt relatively confident going into it is that what I'm taking from that I that you could play with these guys yeah well I, I never could I played for Jesse Burkett and believe me if the all-stars <laughs> run the diamond I'm not I'm not on it 
but I, you I guess I, I, I would say that, you know, if I was batting against like Frankie or Keith, I, I felt just as much as like they were just whizzing it by me, just like anybody else. But when I, in the field, I felt pretty confident, comfortable, I would say. Uh, no, no, I wanted that, to touch on too, uh, Frankie Flynn. I was reading an article earlier, but there was a kind of a controversy on age and people didn't believe people's age on uh, some of the other teams. I was wondering if you guys ever got those questions about Frankie because the kid was an absolute monster. This, this, we, when we went down, that was the year after Danny Almonte. Yeah. So right, things yeah. were quite strict when it came to the age thing. Yeah, so yeah. they did their, their due diligence after that all happened the year before. So I think from my knowledge, I think it was pretty well known. But yeah. I mean, yeah. You can speak to that too. Yeah. So there was a controversy that year too. There was a controversy of whether the Harlem kids were all in district or not. And they won down in the mid Atlantic, but we didn't know. We didn't know uh, if they were going to be playing in, in Williamsport or not. And they cleared it up, but no, I, but, but uh, like ABC did this cool shot. Uh, uh, one time they zoomed in on him and Andy Fallon and yeah. they were like <laughs> yeah. equal to each other. Oh, yeah, Andy yeah. Fallon. I remember that. And then when they panned back, Andy was standing on a bucket yeah, and it yeah. was kind of a cool thing, but ESPN and ABC loved us because we told so many stories. They would keep coming. What are the backstories? And we gave them so many stories for television. They loved us. And and, and I will say, and I yeah, well, Harold Reynolds, yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, Brett Brett Musburger made fun of me on national TV. I thought that Frank Flynn, um, when uh, we we had to win that Texas game, and Frank was nervous and he wasn't throwing feet like he can, going out, and I'm kind of giving it to him. I said, Frank, you got to throw the ball hard. That's what you're doing. But I was saying hard. You got to throw the ball hard. You got to hit it. You know, so I must have said that to him four times. I'm walking off, and Musburger said on national TV that that I I, I talked like a Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! I think yep. I might remember somebody telling me that. I can't remember if I was watching it. Yeah. But I watched ninety well, percent of those games. Uh, yeah. That I remember, or maybe you told me that, Tommy. Maybe but, you remind me of it. I have to but, look it up. But real quick to get back on on Gordy, yeah. and, and especially from a coach's perspective, uh, first of all, that like like any little league team anywhere in the country, when you're picking teams, it's the most asinine. There's so much politics; it's ridiculous. Teddy yeah. should have been on that team as an 11 year old. Gordy should have been on that team, and they all yelled at me for not putting Teddy on because as a coach, I could have put him on. But I said, no, yeah. I'm gonna be uh, you know honest with the process. If he gets voted in. He gets in, and if he doesn't, he doesn't. And um, so, uh, so that that's what happened. But Gordy was the best athlete on the team. There's no doubt about that. He may not have been the best baseball player, but he was definitely the best athlete. But he just emerged as that whole run, as that whole run went on. He just got better and better. He wasn't probably one of our best players on the team when we started in districts. But when we got to Bristol. He was that athlete that stepped up and shined, and then he's one of those athletes that he's probably in the team for a little bit. But he's one of those athletes that just happened, and he got better and better as it went on. And then Cody, um, wins for the last baseball game you ever played, right? Did you ever no, play on this? No, I, yeah. After Babe Ruth, I uh, I retired from baseball. I because I. Yeah, to speak to what Mr. Daly's saying is I, I always consider myself a three-sport athlete, and a lot of these guys were playing AAU ball and stuff like that. So I I, I could feel like that I was getting better over time, but that's just practice. You, you know, you put in a 1,000 hours, you, you get a little bit better. Right. right. Just on a, on a side note with Gordy and his other uh, things, maybe like being a track star, we couldn't punish him uh, because what we would like to do, like when the kids were misbehaving in the dorms, would get them up at 7 in the morning – make them run laps yeah and the two biggest the two biggest offenders were frank flynn and keith landis but we'd get up in the morning at 7 a.m i think that hurt him more than running gordy would get up with him and run with him gordy liked running he go hit run when he wasn't <laughs> even being punished so like how do we how do we punish this kid when he when he uh when he's like he's like a track star but no Dude, gordy, was, uh, he was, gordy you you should have you would have had a career in the army my friend yeah, the people get up early and run with the other MFers. They, they run. 
You would have gone far, bro. I'm sure you've gone far otherwise, but that's the army way. Yeah, I think I, I take a lot of things uh, in a, that militaristic way, and uh, I, I, part of me thought I was going to go into that stuff, but then I don't know. I just school and crap like that. But um, but which is why you know being in a room full of a bunch of jokers, like uh, uh, a bunch of characters, I I, I, I probably <laughs> faded in. I faded into the background a little bit, but um, yeah, right faded. the first time. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it. Teddy, no. well, did you I, play? How far did you play after? Me, I uh, went through high school and uh, ended 19 years old at Legion. And then uh, right after I stopped, well, even while I was playing, I also started coaching when I was 16. So I've been coaching really ever since. There you go. Uh, this, is it this is, to, um, yeah, how do you live up to that after, after literally you had to be kind of boring? No, I, <laughs> was, I mean, it's funny because when people find out that like I was on that team and like I t- we they were always like, oh, how was it? How was it? I'm like, yeah, you know, I peaked at 12. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, peaked, I didn't yeah, really yeah. get much better than that. I, I peaked at 12. <laughs> and that, that's that's football football coach said the same thing. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, you got he, he, he had a great career at Wachusett. He, he was one of the best set-up builders in Central Mass that had ever seen at Wachusett. And then uh, he played for me when I coached Maine South Legion. And, but the, the really cool thing is um, after he was done playing, he started coaching with me. And I just started my 29th year coaching this year, uh, Evolution Baseball. Oh, okay. And uh, Teddy's coaching out there too. And it, this is kind of like that old, uh, that old David Carradine Kung Fu thing where you snatch the pebble from my hand. The, the pebble's definitely been snatched. The grasshopper is is uh, out coaching the master at this point. Awesome. Good. That's good he's, to hear. He, does ama- he does an amazing job coaching. He coaches an 18-year-old program out at Evolution Baseball, and he helps my 14-year-old team out. And um, uh, is, is much, as illustrious as my coaching career has been in 29 years, uh, he's, he's surpassed that. And I just, I'm kind of amazed and proud. Are you still coaching for Maine South? Um, I think this is the year I'm going to hang it up. Uh, really? I, I, yeah. At Maine South only because yeah. I, I'm just so dedicated to Phil Price's program over at evolution. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, you coached my nephew, Tommy. And I yeah. remember watching you at, uh, at least once or twice at Logan field. And I yeah. loved watching you coach is, but those are not teams that Teddy or uh, Gordy would have been on. Right. Yeah. That yeah. would have been years later, right? Yeah. Am I wrong? Uh, right. Are you talking Jim? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bowie he was, he was, you know. So he was, Bowie was, a, Bowie. he was a year younger than Gordy and I, but, uh, oh, okay. in, but in Babe Ruth, they changed the birthdays. So I actually got one extra year at 15-year-old Babe Ruth. So uh, me and Jim, actually, we were very close that year. Um, oh, we were good. very good friends oh. my last year. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Oh, all right, man. He's a he's a great kid. He, I'm Very proud of him kid. as a nephew. And oh yeah. I, I hope he's a I hope he was a good uh, person as he was a ball player. He seemed like a very dedicated ball player, and he seemed Most like definitely. a pretty good kid. You know, you know what I'd tell you about um uh, what did Gordy what did you say a bunch of clowns or uh, a bunch Bowie. of characters? Yeah. No, no. But going back to what Gordy said about a bunch of jokers. About- <laughs> One thing, and I, I'm sure Gordy and Teddy will back me up on this. We went out to Williamsport, and it, you know how it's like every kid's dream to, to, to get there, or and, and ironically, it's every parent, every father's dream. You know when you have that big, big dream to get there. Just Audio is off. <laughs> it doesn't live up to expectations or whatever. This did. This was everything you thought of and, and more. But I'll tell you why. It was because of these kids. We went out there and had fun. We got beat four to nothing by a military regimented team. They couldn't hang out with the kids. They couldn't, um, they they had like four hour practices. They marched in like they were in the military, the, the, the uh, mess hall together. North Korea, eat. you played North Korea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and our, kids are, our kids are hanging out with the kids from Mexico, not understanding a word they were saying, but becoming good friends and, you know, standing shit with them and, and uh, leaving frogs in the bathroom, and, and I was curious. Now. <laughs> yeah. You know, it was, it, I mean, they really enjoyed themselves, and 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 got the most out of, out of the experience. If if I can go back to Gordy Lockbaum one more time, if you don't mind, 
Um, so this is a off topic, but your father is a hero in the city I grew up in. Holy Cross hero. Uh, you're obviously an accomplished athlete through your uh, high school career beyond. Um, do you still live in Worcester? What are you doing right now? Uh, I do. Um, I So once I got out of college, I studied chemistry at Amherst College and played football. And uh, when I got out, I was a high school chemistry teacher for three years at Worcester Academy. Uh, and what's nice about that is I got to That's coach awesome. football and wrestling with my dad. My dad's the head wrestling coach. At, he was the head wrestling coach at Worcester Academy. He's also retired after about 15 years. And then since after, the, after three years, I went back to school at, you, you know, UMass Medical School in Worcester. Um, I, I got my PhD in biochemistry and structural biology. Uh, now I work for a small uh, startup um, pharmaceutical company that's looking to cure cancer. So, so you're basically a dumbass, right? Is that what you're <laughs> you're basically, you don't know shit. You, you, just, you just get degrees here and there, wherever you want. <laughs> I was going to ask you this. There he yeah. is. <laughs> I, I say I, I'm trying to, trying to you know, be both a jock and a nerd. <laughs> so, so Gordy, when you cure cancer, the home run in Bristol is still going to be a bigger, bigger event than when you cure, yeah. cure cancer. Yeah, right? seriously, <laughs> he will cure cancer, and the first line will be the man who hit the, the <laughs> young man who hit the home run has now cured cancer. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly it. But Tom, while, while you bring that up, Gordy was like under a lot of pressure, and his dad probably more because the media wanted to focus on that. About yeah, and, it, uh, and Gordy. And, and, and I got to tell you, his dad was awesome. He would tell the other parents, and he would watch the games from deep, deep back in center field. Um, and pro- not because he wanted to. He probably would have liked to have been right up front with all the other parents, but he didn't want to become the story or because or, um, cool. the media was trying to make that a big thing. But his dad, I, I, I'll never forget that. Huh? He, wanted, yeah. he, wanted, uh, he wanted Gordy to make his own way, but he wanted to be about the kids and not about him. Hey, LeBron, James, LeBron James was dunking in the layup line with his kid. Yeah. Yeah. He's talking about the, the spotlight. That's two different yeah. people right there. That tells a story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was almost hesitant to bring it up, but I mean, I can't talk to Gordy Lockbaum Jr. No, no. The third no. without bringing it up. I no, actually. It's... You know, it's impossible. I, I think <laughs> in our city, our, in our city, you, you you see a total age divide where if somebody brings up the name, it'll go one of two ways. It'll go straight to him or straight to me. Um, yeah, 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 exactly. My my nephews and stuff, they know you from that yeah. team because they grew up in the west side of Tannic. They know like everyone who's on that team. Everyone does. Well, but yeah, my older friends, they do. They think of your father all the time. Sometimes. <laughs> but- if, if my uh, girlfriend's out uh, friend. and, she, and she says she's a uh, dating Gordy Lockbaum, a lot of people will be like, isn't he old? You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, that is, oh, see, that's actually kind of weird. Yeah, but, you know what I mean? But Tom, what, what's, what's cool about that is, is Gordy Sr. let Gordy Jr. make his own way. So that's the way it is today. Back then. No, I, I old, get it. Right? I totally get it Back then there was, just, there was just, Gordy Lockbaum, Heisman Trophy superhero, and, and, and young Gordy was just a 12-year-old kid. So so what his dad did was, uh, uh, like, it's a, uh, an amazing, uh, I, I know, uh, lesson learned in parenting. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yep. Yeah, and he raised his kid to come up and cure kids. Yeah, he's, he's <laughs> hey, still yeah. a dumbass. He's a dumbass. What <laughs> <Yeah, yeah. laughs> the hell does he know? He's only got a PhD <laughs> or whatever he's got. So, <laughs> Mike, we... We did jump over it, but Teddy Teddy wanted to tell the story about how I almost broke his job before pitch one, before pitch one of the World Series. All right, yes. give us a good yes. story. Give us a good story. <laughs> then we got to roll into Peter probably. Uh, so, him up. <laughs> story. so yeah, I, and Gordy probably remembers this too. So my my dad he would hit the infield outfields and the entire All Star run pregame infield outfield he was money didn't mess up once it was just. Boom, boom, boom. Everything was on point. So now we get to Williamsport. Game one, we're playing. We're playing against Hawaii. Oh, I'm a little jack, all right? I'm a little jack. Yeah. You know, he's, he's a little wired up. So he goes, throws the first ball up, hits a fly ball to left field. And now he's jacked up. I'm jacked up. I'm running after him. I'm like, I got it. I got it. I got it. Full force, 100%. Boom. Into the wall. Jaw yeah. into the wall. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yep no i uh we ended up 
I was all right. We ended up playing, and uh, that was the game we lost two to one. And uh, but yeah, no, I I thought my Little League World Series experience was going to be over before it began. Wow, oh, <laughs> from dad, awesome. Yeah, awesome. if you had to go out, if you had to go out that way, that's the best way to go out. Run through <laughs> a wall, like not even fucking paying attention to your own safety. <laughs> like, fuck it, I'm just trying. It's not good for you. I would take it. So you guys, well, well that's that's a lesson in parenting we don't want. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, listen, uh, thank you guys for coming on. I mean, we can bullshit after. I think uh, Peter's only got a, a few minutes. I'm going to jump off here and let you guys ask some questions or do whatever. Tom, take it away. Um, okay. And I, I want a special thank you to Gordy, Tom, and Teddy. Yeah, I thank really you very much, guys. It. We appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, we're just uh, trying to put together some sort of shitty sports podcast, but <laughs> yeah. guys like you make it possible. Yeah, so you know we, I mean? we appreciate it. Believe me, we appreciate it. <laughs> and stick around for Peter McNeely, because he's a blast. I yeah, guarantee he... you. It's <clears throat> fucking worth your time. Unless you're studying for your next fucking master's degree, he, Gordy. He... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Gordy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, unless you have to go to school in the morning. Peter! Everybody wants right. some Peter McNeely. The hurricane is back, baby. Woo! Hi, guys. What's going Hi, on? Hi, Peter. Hi, Peter. Great to see you. This is Tom Fleming again. Happy to Tom, see you, my friend. Tom, always good to see you and hear you. <laughs> All right. How you doing, man? Can't, can't complain. Can't complain. Just hanging here at my home. All right. Uh, did you catch any of the earlier discussion we had about the uh, Little League World Series team? I heard something about somebody in a fight. <laughs> yeah. That's all you ever hear. If somebody, somebody says fight, and you're like, all right, I'm in. Whatever. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> the, fucking, the cocoon of horror. Yeah, and now you've wrapped our blog into a cocoon of horror. <laughs> hey, but we don't know. We don't know yet. But you never know. I could be out there to wrap somebody else up again. Yeah, I don't think you should do that, my friend. <laughs> I don't think that sounds like a you never know. I'm still, hey, I'm still... Still, what, 120 pounds. You're 120 pounds? That's I'm sorry, still, two, two, still 220. Still 220. Oh, 220, all right. I'm closer still, to 120 than I am to 220. It's scary. But anyway, uh, Peter, uh, I was trying to share some of your links to buy your merchandise earlier, and I found it difficult to use PayPal. Is that something I should work on, or I, is it? I I know I know we take credit cards, but I don't know I don't About know what PayPal. The... Okay, all right. I'm gonna look into that because I want to give links to people to buy your merch, but I I I ran into a quick like a little you know screw up. It's the internet. What are you gonna do? But well, what I'm you, happy to you? buy it. I want that Cocoon of Horror t-shirt more than I've ever wanted any t-shirt ever. <laughs> I want that t-shirt bad. Great shirt! <laughs> I'm going to get it. I'm going to find a way to get it. Uh, uh, what's up? I'm going, I'm going with the grays. I'm going with the grays. Yeah, so you're not doing like the shaving and haircut thing? Like, is that like a COVID? Like, you don't want to go to the barbershop so much? I actually went to the barbershop today for the first time in months and it felt good, but uh, I understand the reticence, you know? Uh, I'm, I'm giving it a little, a little weight, a little weight. All right. But, that's but I, got I got a good head of hair. Yes. Yeah. Well, dude, Jay Leno's hair. Honestly, I just all of a sudden I just had a flashback to Jay Leno in his in his like fucking like his prime. <laughs> he has big head of hair. I don't have any of that hair. So that's why I have to get a haircut. What? 
Okay. Everything about the beard. Everything about the beard. <laughs> I'm like Mike Tyson this way. We both got gray beards. Yeah, that's one way you're like Mike Tyson. There's another way. <laughs> you fought together. <laughs> but let's not do it. You two opponents. You two opponents. <laughs> yes. Hey, any any uh, forward momentum on you showing up on Tyson's blog, or is that still sort of stalled? I'd love uh, to see that. That that is something that may happen in the future. Yeah, that, yeah. Uh, that's cool. As long as it's still a possibility, whenever oh. it happens, please let us know because I, I guarantee we'll share the shit out of it. it certainly, it. certainly will. Excellent. It's extremely well. All right. Um, any uh, uh, a, a again, thank you for joining us. And B, uh, any sports shit that's on your mind you want to talk about? Red Sox, Celtics, Bruins, Patriots, anything you got going on, Pete, Peter? Love them all. Love them all. And we're in, we're in Red Sox season now. That's for sure. Yeah, this Red Sox season is not bad at all. It's freaking, I believe we have the best record in the league, if I can believe Tommy Daly. And <laughs> he told me that the other day. So that's cool. Hey, uh, and we, we and got the, the, the Red Sox opened up tonight. Introduce yourself. That's Teddy Daly, I think, who's speaking to you, Peter. No, that was, uh, that was Tommy. Tommy's talking. I was just oh, saying. Uh, it was a good day in Worcester today because the uh, Polar Park in Worcester Red Sox opened up today. That's uh, I was just saying. The Worcester Red Sox. Oh, yeah. The Woo Sox. The Woo Sox, yeah. The Woo Sox. Hey, they should bring in the wrestler. Woo! We're clear, baby. <laughs> Bring the player. Woo! <laughs> That's great, man. I'm glad to see you, Silva. You having a positive attitude? Do you ever? Do you plan on going up to a Worcester Red Sox game anytime in the summer, Peter? Hey, I'm, I'm not cutting my hair or my beard. They're yeah. Gonna, they're gonna have right. to... You better <laughs> cut your hair and your beard if you're gonna hang out with me. <laughs> Hey, you never know. You never know. <laughs> right. Go ahead, Shamrock. Uh, Peter. Uh, God knows I fought in Worcester three times. Bobby Harris. Oh, wow, that was in the amateurs. I split what a piece of Bobby. At the Worcester first, line. First one I beat him. Second one he beat me. Yep. Three round decisions in the amateurs. Peter, tell me something. Uh, this week I told you earlier, I watched that uh that interview that you did with Chris Myers. Yeah. Do you remember that? Remember that interview? How did oh, yeah. you not how did you not jump across the table and work that guy? I was <laughs> I, I really I was I was getting upset watching that. I was like, what? He's like <laughs> Are you I would have flipped that table like you, when he called uh, oh. called that guy Chris Everett. I would have done that. Should have been the first one. Well, hey, you know, if, if I wanted to kill every interviewer, I true. Good right. call. Then, then I would have. Oh, if if I, I ever see that guy, I'm gonna backhand him. <laughs> <laughs> but you, I tell you, I don't, you kept it together with that. That was crazy. But that was a great interview. That was that was a long one too. So. Well, well, that's something about Peter is that he always kept his, uh, he kept his, no, uh, I, I want to say the word nobility. That's not the right word, but he never, even during like the times when after he lost the fight and went through things, no one ever thought that he'd lost his character. Everyone thought Peter was a man of character, and they still do. Oh, you know yeah, what I mean? Right. Even in that, he's not going to sucker punch somebody or like punch some guy <laughs> because he asked him a dumb question. I mean, Peter is a guy like, I mean, just from the press, I've only chatted with him a couple of times. 
but in the, even from the press, you can understand this guy could do a lot more damage if he wanted to, and he never did. He uh, never yeah. did. Yep, it, no doubt, no so, doubt. Hey, it is what it is. You got to be ready. You got to be able to take whatever they they throw at you. Peter, what what is it called? To have to have gloves will travel or something like that? I don't know. That was what I fought in. Uh, Copenhagen, Denmark, on eight days notice. And then yep. my, last yep. pro, my last pro fight was on eight days notice in Cape Town, South Africa. And yep. have gloves will travel, baby. Yeah, gloves will travel. That's right. <laughs> yeah, man. You saw the world, man. You saw the world based on your ability. Yep. And that's something not a lot of people can say. Not a lot of people would say that. I, I was, uh, I I was lucky it. enough. I was lucky enough to meet the hurricane. We used to have the uh, celebrity fights in Worcester. The Worcester. The uh, yeah. Gang oh shit! Fights, you guys know them. each other? I forgot about. That. I oh, didn't even well, think we, of that. No, we just just met once, and he was a guy. He was a great, great guy. Letting his, uh, lending his uh, his um, notoriety to a, a great cause, and it, it, it was really, it was really nice meeting him. And I do remember. The woman he had on his arm, I'm going to tell you, he's a lucky guy. No. <laughs> she is now my wife. <laughs> She's yeah. a lovely woman. She Area. is an absolutely lovely woman. Very, very beautiful. Yeah. Hey, Peter, I came across another video, too, of, um, of uh, I was talking earlier, the fight, I told you, with uh, the Akinwande guy. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this dude. He's got to be like 6'10". I don't know the exact stats. but Oh, he's huge. If you watch it, I don't know. Like, that fight was incredible. I don't even... You're crazy. You're nuts. I took that fight on nine days notice. And, and in uh, Tallahassee, Florida. Yep. And, uh, you know, I, I just completed my training... And we got hit with a with a, a snow ice storm. Yeah. And it pulled the wires in the house. And uh, I wound up I wound up sick. And you know, but the guy, I mean, that Akawandi was a very, very great fighter. He was huge. I mean WBO heavyweight champ. And Yo, it was a tough one to go up against. Yeah, yeah, I, I, it looked like it. <laughs> he looked like almost. I mean, I know he's not as scary as a Tyson or a Holyfield or a Lennox or whatever, or a Lewis or whatever. Uh, but man, street, he looked terrifying. In he the looked street, terrifying. I'm, I'm more afraid of that. Maybe Akiwani he was guy that good. I don't know. Uh, that Akiwande guy, Tyson, you don't know, like from a, a little distance. Akiwande, you can see him from a different state. I'm telling you, that guy. Yeah. Was, Monster. That guy would scare the like, living shit. Well, how long tall? He's got to be six human. eight. Or... My reach, tip to tip, is eighty six. I'm sorry, nine thirty four. His was eighty six. So you had the same reach as the guy, but he was like four inches taller than you. It was seventy four, tip to tip. His was 86. Oh, okay. I misunderstood. Jesus Christ. That's like fighting a monster. I didn't hear me from the dressing room. Yeah. Say again. I, I didn't hear me from the locker room. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. There's yeah, no way to put a guy with that kind of reach into a cocoon, bro. Yeah, that cocoon yeah. is your shot. Eventually, it's going to pop out, right? Am that, I right? That was a tough one. Yeah. <laughs> one. Uh, uh, hey, while we're here, I, I still see Teddy and Tommy. I want to make sure you guys are in the conversation. Are you guys going to ask yeah. Peter? You got to talk I, to Peter about I, I, I can see that. Just that that I uh, I really uh, WPD gang unit when he when he came down for the fights at the Palladium. 
Yes. Big. Oh. No, tell me that story. I don't know what you mean. I don't know what you mean. So uh, WPD gang unit every year would raise money for the boys club. They make like about 75000 on the event. It was like it was like a big social night whistle, big night out. Everybody dressed up. You would think they were like the real fights in Vegas, but there would there would be there would be some police fights where we'd train a guy who might fight a trooper. Um, yeah. The, oh, I'm pretty sure my cousin Kev Kevin yeah. fought in one of those. But then, I, or Mark, I can't. We would have we would have celebrity fights too, like a one city council would fight another city councilor. Or, um, I remember. <laughs> you know, the boys club. My uh, father trained Carlos Garcia. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah the Worcester hero. Yeah. Yeah. Carlos Garcia was a Worcester icon. But Still is. Legend. Yeah, so it, it was a big fundraiser, and then everyone would go to the Irish Times after, and uh, they, they raised a ton of money every year for the, the boys' club. And um, and I, I remember Peter coming down uh, to the fights and, and being a, a, uh, it was great to, to like a him. supporter as a supporter of the yeah. fights to get yeah. fans. Uh, good for he you, Peter, best. man. I know you do man. a lot of charity work and stuff like that, but that's cool that yeah. you did it for Worcester, man. Yeah. I appreciate whatever it. Asked, whatever asked, I do it. You're the man, Peter. Yeah, I'll tell, I keep awesome. telling people this. I keep telling people this. You're the man. That's great. All right. Uh, uh, Kev Wenahan, do you have anything to say? I see him chiming in. Uh, he's a, there. Oh. Are you there, Kev? You have anything you want yeah, to add, guys, Peter? Um, I wasn't even sure if, if, if I was publicly visible here, but um, in, yeah, P Peter, it's an it's an honor to meet you. Um, I remember those fights; those were incredible. My only question is, um, you got you you had did such a great job behind the mic in promoting that fight. How, did you ever get any? options to do any acting in Hollywood, you know, some bit roles and stuff like that. You know, like a Tommy Morrison kind of thing. Yeah, I can't say that I did. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, you, you had you needed a you needed the right agent, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what it is. Yeah. Yeah. And I just want to say hi and hi Tommy and Teddy too. I haven't a long time hey, no. Kevin, how's everything Kevin? Looking good. Thanks. Doing good. Doing good. You guys looking good too? Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. You're lying. Kevin looks like powder because he has the lighting totally off on his fucking so computer. Funny. So <laughs> let's 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 not gild the lily too much. I'm really just <laughs> but, a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> but really, Peter, all of us respected you back then and until now. And the same goes for <laughs> Tommy now. Kelly and Teddy and the Little League team. We you guys provided us with more sporting entertainment and sporting conversation over the years that almost like outlives like the event. You know what I mean? You fought for a few minutes and it was an awesome fight. These guys, they got right to the cusp and almost got there. And, but still for 20 years, we talk about that shit. I mean, it's just, we, we are you, grateful to you. It's coming up on 26. <laughs> it's 26, good Lord. Oh my God! That makes just makes me feel so freaking old. Yeah, <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, hey Tom, no, no, it might be a good podcast. Would we get uh, Kev? Maybe we get all the uh, Leitrim's All Stars back and have a little podcast reunion. Yeah, yeah we, we, we kind of had a little bit of that a couple weeks ago. Um, when oh yeah, Mike and a couple other people were on, and it was it was yeah. a lot of fun. I think that'd be good. Yeah. All right, let's, let's not take more of Peter's time than we have to. Peter, is there any way uh, you can one more time tell me how to buy merchandise and you can tell our viewers how to watch, to buy go merchandise? On, on I my know you already said it. I want to write it down. Go on my Instagram, Peter.McNeely, all lowercase letters. Oh, really? Oh. That's it? Okay. Go on my Instagram profile or my Facebook profile. Okay. Thank you. And everyone who's listening to this, remember that. That's the way to do it. It was tricky to do through Facebook, but if we can do it that way, do it that way. Buy his it's, shit. Yeah. No Peter one else dot, is going to have... Peter Dot McNeely, all lowercase letters. All right. 
No one else in your neighborhood, especially if you're like me living in North Carolina, is going to have a Cocoon of Horror t-shirt. But I will. I'll fucking rock that shit. I'll rock that shit at the dog park in front of a bunch of Karens. And they'll be like, what the hell? <laughs> uh, anything else? Uh, Mike, anything else you want to talk about? I mean, I mean, I feel like we're we're, oh, there's, uh, plenty, we're, there's plenty to talk about. All right, bring it up. I, I'm sorry if I cut off everybody. I no, can no, I, can no, I give no. you an update? Kemba oh, Walker, yeah. Kemba Walker just went <laughs> to the locker room with an injury. Really? Yep. Uh, after finding out that JB's out for the year, I don't know how much there is to look forward to for this season anyways. Tatum will take yeah, I was kind of hoping they're going to tank the rest of the way, too, but I yeah, just figured yeah. I'd... I got him on anyways. I figured I'd give you that update. He just left. He just left injured. Hmm. Yep. Who left injured? Tatum. Kemba Walker. Oh, Kemba. Good. So second. So we've lost Bray. Uh, all right. All right. Fine. All right. Whatever. Whatever. I can't worry about the Celtics this year. I got too much other shit going on. <laughs> I mean, they're gonna be like a ninth seed. <laughs> Yeah, if but they had half the heart of Peter McNally, McNeely, they would have been fine. That's yeah. what I'm saying. That's what I'm Peter saying. Peter McNally? Who the fuck is that? A car dealership? <laughs> Who the fuck is Peter McNally? Me, Peter McNally, Toyota! Come on down! Fuck off. <laughs> you don't know the man's name. <laughs> I don't know. It's hard as much as leadership on that thing, so. No. Oh, that's the big question, Teddy. That's that's all right. I'll let Kev talk. He has opinions on this. Opinions on what? The said, leadership. There's no oh, the leadership. leadership. You got some superstars, but but yeah. there are there, there's no team unity and no leadership there. Yeah. A lot of, a lot, need, of indiv- lot of individual play. They need a KG. Yeah. Even if yeah. Kevin yeah. Garnett. Yeah. Hell yeah. Every team needs a KG. <laughs> Oh, he, and might been, one, he might have been a little softer, but even uh, even in Al Horford, you didn't think you'd miss him as much as you do. But yeah, he he I miss Al. I I miss Al Horford. I always yeah. liked that guy. I always did. Yeah, I might have been a sucker for him, but yeah. I always nope. liked him. And, it, and it's really weird. You watch him play, and they move the ball perfectly, and then they they, they keep scoring. They go up big, and then they decide, let's go uh, twenty second ISOs. JT does an ISO for 20 seconds and then misses a fadeaway jumper, but they keep going back to that, back to back. It's like, do what works. It's pretty yep. simple. Yeah. Yep. I think uh, Brad Stevens is a little too much Richie Cunningham for this he, team. He's gone. Too. He, yeah, he's gone. They, they need someone that's a little tougher than him. For the, yeah. you know. uh, uh, m- m- Mr. Mc- Peter, Peter McNeely, what's your favorite sport to watch? I think we ran over this like a uh, episode or two ago. But do, are you a big football, baseball, basketball, hockey fan? Apart from boxing, I understand. Straight boxing. Straight, Straight bo- boxing. You don't even watch the Celts or the Bruins or the Red Sox. He's baseball. fighting. That's it. It's time. What did you yeah. think of MMA? Ah, uh, no, 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 no. Was it on their feet? Okay, but was it when it turns into grape smuggling? <laughs> that makes me a little uneasy. Great smuggling. <laughs> yeah. It's Ben Bowen. I love it. Yeah. What do you think about uh, Jake Paul fighting Floyd Mayweather? Uh, yeah, that's what I expected. That, I think that's everybody's reaction. But I, is that, it's amazing. It's a payday for me. I love the payday for Mayweather. That's all. Yeah, no shit. Yep. And McGregor's mad. Hmm. McGregor's mad. What'd you say? Dude, he's always mad. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's been mad, he's been mad since Floyd beat him. 100 million? That's all right. right? Yeah. He, he's all mad right. that Floyd beat him, but he knew that it was a money grab, oh, right? Yeah. Is that not? Or did he really think he could beat him? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, no. you would. I would. That's money. To me, money. it seemed like a, 
I mean, if he can take the beating, like he can last the 10 rounds or whatever, he deserves the money because the people paid for it. Right? I guess. But I don't know. So I, I, I got a I got a question for Peter. Peter, do you think the sport will ever come back to its its heyday, its glory days? I Watson. Uh, yes, yes. Good. So, yeah. What What does it need? Uh well, for starters, I think it needs a third <clears throat> Fury. Um. Third match between Fury and and uh, the third fight between Fury and and um, I can't even remember his name. The big dude, uh, Deontay Wilder. No, Josh. Thank, thank, Wilder. A, a third fight, I think, is needed. Yeah. That's a big one. Tyson Fury. I watched a, a great video on him too. He's awesome. He's a great story. I'm, I'm, how did he get up? How did he get up in that, like the Undertaker in that Deontay Wilder fight? He just, he looked like he was done and then he just rose up. That's real life. He really got punched. It's not, there, I think a third fight is needed. I don't know. He needs to fight uh, ooh, Anthony Joshua too, right? That's supposed to happen first. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. And he's so, a big dude too. That, that'll be a challenge. So, Peter, you do watch MMA? You do watch it? You follow it a little bit? Do I? Yeah. Do you follow MMA? I don't. All right. Neither do I. Because some of the – I was just going to say, half of the names Mike Casello just said, I have no idea who the hell they are. And I just don't want to feel like too much of an idiot. But if you don't know, I don't need to know. You're the fucking pro fighter. As soon as it goes to the mat. Boring. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I get it. I get it. That's, that's just me. Yeah. Right. Um. So, uh, Mike, what do you got? You got anything? We got uh. Kevin, yeah, what's the score on the Celtics game right now? Eleven ten Celtics, but it, it was started. a one point ten two. So Miami's coming on strong and yeah. Uh, I don't know. All right, go on. Do we have a Do we have a score of the Providence Bruins game tonight? <laughs> Seriously, what the we fuck are you doing here? Was, People, was, why are right? we even here? <laughs> oh no, uh, no, the Bruins. The Bruins are playing, but they clinched third place yesterday, so they're sitting everybody tonight. So they're playing a national NHL game with with like no Bergeron, no Marshan, no Pasta. They're all sitting. Really. That, that much yeah. Well, uh, since Kev opened the door by mentioning Miami, I want all of you guys to know that uh, Bam Adebayo of Miami mm. is an actual really nice guy, a legit guy. I've, I've, I've covered his games when he was in high school, and he's a really nice guy, so don't root against him. I know he's, he looks like a bruiser sometimes, but he's not. He's a fucking solid guy. Tom, are you fucking kidding me? You're all of a sudden a fucking Bam Adebayo fan? Is yes, this- I've always been. I've been a Bam Adebayo fan since he was a son of a podcast, man. Jesus. <laughs> Dude, I am a Bam Adebayo fan. Uh, and I would Bam take Bam. him in a fight Fuck. over anyone on the Celtics. Fuck Bam Adebayo <laughs> tonight. How about that? <laughs> What's that? It, I'm not. Listen. Tatum, we're talking, we need to talk about Tatum. When did you when did you last see Bam out of bio? In person, like three years ago. Uh, <laughs> in real life, like, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. Well, I mean, on TV a couple weeks ago. In person, I covered him, like I said, multiple games and tournaments. And he was I, the, literally the nicest guy. He was a lot, hell of a lot nicer than these pe- pricks who ended up at Duke and Kentucky, or no, he ended up in Kentucky, but yeah. uh, Duke <laughs> and UNC and shit like that. No, he was he's a good guy. I will always root for Bam Adebayo. He's okay. like the, I don't know, he's like a, I don't want to say gentle giant 
she will knock the living fuck out of you if he yeah. wants to. Yeah. So he's not gentle, but man, he's a nice guy to people who he doesn't need to be nice to. I was a fucking nothing. I was a cameraman attendant oh. or whatever the fuck I was. And he came up and helped me out, wrapped up my fucking extension cords. Yeah. He's a solid guy. So you gotta, you know, some of these athletes aren't as privileged and as people think they are. You know what I mean? Or they don't act as that, you know? And you bring up Miami, I always bring up Adebayo. Yeah, the I mean, they're, they're, there's a real life story behind this. But, you know, I mean, look at it. You know, we were, I never, I would have never thought Peter was as cool as he is. I mean, just celebrity status. Why would you, why would you talk to, you know, anyone? But that's how he is. He's a good dude. Human. You know what I mean? I, I can't say human, enough. Human beings being what they are are only humans. That's right. That's right. Yep. And you're, you're one of the good ones, Peter. You're one of the good ones. Yep. Yep. No doubt. Well, guys, listen, we're going to wrap it up. Uh, it's been a lot. We appreciate it. Tommy and Teddy, thank you very much. Peter, thank you very much. Kevin, thanks for joining everybody else. Thanks for having me. Nice oh, to meet you, Peter. Uh, What's that, Peter? Say again. Go Woo Sox. Hold on, yes, go yeah. Woo Sox. No shit. Hey, Dude, yeah, I'll sorry. be up there. Hey, I'll be yeah. up there this summer. I'm watching yeah. a Woo Sox game and a Cape League fucking game. And you, you should be in both of them. I'm pointing at you, Peter. Right. I don't know if you can see where I'm pointing, <laughs> but yeah, that's what that's what we're doing. We're gonna watch some ball games, bro. We're gonna watch some ball games. I well, love it. I fucking love it. Hey, before there we were eight, eight, sure. eight to five winners in the home opener today against the Mets. Really? Oh, they did. They won their home oh, yeah. opener. Yeah. All right, yeah. that's yeah. always a good sign. That's always good, a good, good. Sign. guys. Yeah, their top their top prospect hit two home runs. No shit. All right. Awesome. Keep an eye out. Ja Jaron Duran. Jaron Duran. Awesome. Jaron Duran. Okay. I'll keep Guys, Thank before you. we leave, Peter, can you do it before we go? Uh, can I do what? You know what? I don't I'm think he does. Really, from NBA last. On Saturday, I want you to kick Dyson's ass. You haven't made your baby arrangements yet? Make them soon. You know what happens when I wrap you in my cocoon, Cocoon, baby. Woo! <laughs> That's what it's Peter. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'll talk to you soon, brother. Yeah, thank have you. A night, guys. Hey, have a great night, guys. Take it easy. Oh, see you later. Bye.